15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. It's a sultry night in July. You've fallen asleep in the armchair. Abruptly, you startle awake, disoriented. The television set is on, but not the sound. You strain to understand what you're seeing. Two ghostly white figures in coveralls and helmets are softly dancing. They make strange little skipping motions which propel them upward amid barely perceptible clouds of dust. But something's wrong. They take too long to come down. Encumbered as they are, they seem to be flying. A little. You rub your eyes, but the dreamlike tableau persists. Of all the events surrounding Apollo 11's landing on the moon, on July 20th, 1969. My most vivid recollection is its unreal quality. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin shuffled along the gray, dusty lunar surface, the Earth looming large in their sky, while Michael Collins, now the moon's own moon, orbited above them in lonely vigil. Yes, it was an astonishing technological achievement and a triumph for the United States. Yes, the astronauts displayed death-defying courage. Yes, as Armstrong said as he first alighted, this was a historic step for the human species. But if you turned off the byplay between mission control and the sea of tranquility, with its deliberately mundane and routine chatter, and stared into that black and white television monitor, you could glimpse that we humans had entered the realm of myth and legend. Once upon a time, we soared into the solar system for a few years. Then we hurried back. Why? What happened? What was Apollo really about? <laughs>